In this video, we will go over how to create a Google site to use with your students. Uh, so the first thing, how do we get to Google Sites? Once you sign into your Google account, you'll be taken to your Gmail. Uh, we'll go up here to these dots, also known as the waffle. If we click on it, it'll take us to Google Sites. So if we click on that, it'll take us to this page. Something to keep in mind is that this is actually the old version of the Google Sites that will eventually go away and migrated to the new sites. So it's important when you go to this page to click on new Google Sites. So when I click on that, I'll be taken to this page that shows all of the sites that you've made before. So these are the sites I've made. Maybe yours is blank and that's fine. To make a new Google site, you'll go down to the lower right hand corner, click on this plus and it will change the page to create your new site. So the first thing you'll want to do is rename your site. You can do that by clicking on this area right here. So this is the name of your website file. So I can call this example. So once you rename that, and again, that's just the name of the file, you want to name your homepage. This is the first page that your visitors will go to. So you can go ahead and give it a name. Okay. Now, if you wanted to change the background, you can uh, hover your mouse over this area, go to change image, and you can either upload an image that you have on your computer or you can select one. If we click, if we click select, we have different options on where to get some images. You have some default ones that Google is offering here. All right, so we can click one of these. And if you want something more unique, go back to ch um, change image, hit select image, and you can actually go to search and it'll search Google for some images. So if I type in school, I have some images here. So you want something that's not too colorful that might make it hard to read the text that you have up there. So let's say I just choose this one. And as you can see, it says adjusting for readability. What that means is that it's automatically changing the color of your image to increase the contrast of your text so it's easy to read. So if I click on these stars again to remove readability, um, that's the, what the original colors of the picture look like. It's dark against dark text, so it's hard to read. So I'm going to re-enable readability. It makes it lighter, makes it easier to read. Okay, so let's say you have some co-teachers that you work with and you want to share them in your site to also give them the ability to create pages, edit pages, add content, and all of that. How do you do that? You go up to this area right here, share with others. When you click on it, this window will pop up and you'll have two um, sharing areas um, in regards to your draft. This is before you publish it for your audience and then your published site, uh, who can view your site. So if the goal is to share this site with your co-teachers, you can go ahead and just add them down here. So you just add the name of the teacher you can add more than one if you wanted to. And then you can add a message if you want. So you add the name and again, you have some options here. How do you want that person to interact with it? Do you just want them to view the published site or do you want them to edit the page? In this case, I want this teacher to edit this page along with me. So I'll hit send. And then you'll see the names of the people who have access to your page and you can hit done. Now, if I switch back to another screen of that teacher that I just shared this with, what will happen is that they will get an email where they can access the site. And then they can go ahead and edit along with you. Now, let me switch back to my main page and you'll know that they're on this page editing with you because you'll see the name of the teacher up here, very similar to a Google Doc. So I'm going to go ahead and just exit this and continue editing. Next, how do I edit content on here? So you have this blank area down below. If you double click in this area, you will see this ring appear with these different options. Okay, now you can 
add text in the middle, add an image, embed something, add something from your drive or upload something. Easiest thing to do is start by adding text. All right, so you have this block that you can add text. All right, so I can say, um, welcome, hello students, welcome to our new website. Uh, so the first question I get from most people, how do you change the font and the size? Right now you have limited options on how you can do that. In order to change the size, you would highlight the text. You'll see that you have an option here to make that normal text or something else. This is how you currently make the text larger or smaller. So if I click on title, it makes it bigger. I can bold it, italicize, center it if I wanted to. I have some options here. I can also make that text a link. Okay, so the audience sees that, but I can add the specific link down here. Okay, so if I click on that, it'll take you to this page. So same thing with this text down here. If I highlight that, I can change the type of text that is in terms of size. So it's up to you. If I add more text, all I do is double click down here. Same thing, click the text button and then you can add something else. So I'll leave that as is. Know that when you hover your mouse over these sections, you have some options here. You can delete the section, you can duplicate it if you wanted to, and you can change the color of the background of it, okay? By clicking on that um, paint icon. Also know that when you hover your mouse over these sections, you'll see these other dots here and your cursor will change from an arrow to a directional pad. This means you can click and move the sections. You can rearrange them if you want, okay? Just know that you have that as an option. Next, how do you add pages to your site? Very simple, go over here to the right side. There's an area that says pages. By default, you'll have one page, home. So you can go ahead and create a new page or even a new link to show up in this navigation bar. We'll start with a new page. I'll call this page reading. So it shows up here, but it also shows up in this area up here. And then I'll add another page. I'll call this one math. So it's up to you to decide what your pages are what you want to name them and where they will be. If you wanted to edit the names of these pages, when you hover your mouse over them, you'll see these three dots. You can click on them and you have some options here. Properties will give you the option to rename the page. You can also rearrange them by clicking and dragging. Okay, know that Right now it's home, math, reading. If I wanted to change that and have reading next, click on reading and drag it up. Notice when I drag it up, it either becomes this thin line or it outlines math. If I outline this page, it nests the page within math. Now there's only one page, but when I hover my mouse over there, you'll see the other one, okay? And if you didn't want that, again, just click and drag it out so you see that thin line. Very important. Okay, so I have my home page. If I click on reading, I'll be in my reading page. How do I add content on here from my Google Drive? Different ways. I can double click in this blank area and click on from drive, or if I go up to here where it says insert and I click on that area, these are the different things I can add to my web page. What's nice about this section is that it gives you different layouts that you can play around with. Okay, so this one, if I click on it, it automatically gives me a layout where I have an image here and some text, okay? So it, it, it does a nice job of sort of helping you out with what, what you want your layout to be. Okay, so if I wanted to test this out, let's say I wanna select an image. Um, again, I'll do a Google search. Okay, my man reading a book right here. And then open to our reading page. Okay, 
Again, that was just um, a preset layout from one of these things here. And again, you have more things. Take a look, you can add a calendar, a map, you can add docs. Um, something people are adding are Google Slides, and I think that's a great idea um, of your, you know, either PowerPoints or interactive whiteboard files, Prometheum or Smartboard, where you export into a PowerPoint. You can bring that into Drive as a slide, and I think that's a great way to share um, your work for your students. So if I click on Slides, it's going to pull up all of the Google Slides uh, that I have in my... Um, Google in my Google Drive right now. So let's say I click on one of these. Let's say website. I'll click on this one and I hit insert. It'll add my Google Drive slide right over here. You want to make sure that your slide is set to be public uh, on the web. Otherwise, when you publish your site, uh, people won't be able to access that. So again, you want to make sure that your slide is public. So how do you make sure that your files are able to be accessible to the public, such as parents and other people who don't have a Google address from your school? So you have to go to your Google Drive and look for that file. So by default, all files are private. So if we open up this file, you'll see that the share button has a lock next to it and it says private only to you. So you have to actively click on share, go to advanced, and then go to change. You'll have some options. So I recommend clicking on anyone with the link, meaning if you send this link to someone, then they're able to view this file. So you hit done. And then if I go back to my site, again, you can go to math or a different page, double click, add something from your drive, find that file. But recent. And now I'll know that this file is accessible to the general public. Um, so, so now that we added um, some pages and some files, let's see what this looks like. Okay, how do we publish our site? So you can go ahead and click on publish. And it's going to ask you to um, give yourself a web address. So I'll say Mr. K's Mr. K class. And this is the actual URL of the site. And keep in mind that when you type in here, it's automatically updating the URL down below. So here you have some options. Who can view my site? Anyone at your school's domain. What does that mean? It means that if somebody, for somebody to access this website, they need to be signed in to your school domain. So that's good if you want an internal site or you only want students to view it. But if you want parents, to view this site or the public to view this site, those people do not have accounts that end in your domain. So if you want this site to be public, you're going to have to click manage. And here where it says published, you need to change this right now. It's saying that anyone at your school domain can view your site. So you want to change it and you want this one. Anyone can find and view the published version. So you click that and then you hit save and then you can hit done. All right, so here we go. Who can view my site? Anyone. Um, if you want, you can request that search engines don't display your site. So it's sort of like a semi um, level of privacy. And then you go ahead and hit publish. After you publish your site, if you want to view it, next to the publish button, you'll see this arrow key, arrow down. When you click on it, you have some options. One of them is view published site. It's going to open up a new tab and here, this is what your public will see, what your audience will see. And if you want to double check and make sure that they can access this, I'd recommend going to these three dots here. If you are in Chrome, opening up an incognito window, that's a window that's not logged into any account. Go ahead and paste your site. And if, if you see it, then it means it's working, it's public. 
and I have my Google slide right here, which can be lessons uh, that you have. Okay. So let me go back to the tab where I'm editing, uh, editing my site. Next, another important thing you need to learn when you're working with the Google sites is how to publish changes. So when you open up this view of Google sites, you're in essentially in edit view. So let's say my site is published, people are reading it, parents are reading it, and I want to add new information. Okay, so let's say I want to add something to the reading page. Um, maybe I'll add a new section and I can say uh, new resources. So I'll have my new resources information here, but I didn't publish it yet. So I can see it in the edit view, but if I switch to the published version of my page and I go to reading, that new section is not there because I didn't hit publish. So if I switch back, what I need to do, once I make the changes that I want my public to see, I'm gonna go up to this area, this button and hit publish. This window is gonna pop up and it's, it's nice. It's gonna show you what your draft looks like with your new edit and then what the current published uh, site looks like. So as you can see, this, air, this section is not here. So you finalize it by hitting publish and then now you should be set. Now, if I go back to the window where I'm viewing it as a public member and I refresh the page, I'll see the new edit right here. So I'm going to go back. It's very important. Whenever you make a change, make sure you publish it. Next, what about videos? How do you upload videos on here? So on my desktop, I have a video that I'd like to share. So in order to do that, I need to upload that video into my Google Drive. So while I'm in my drive, I'll go to new file upload and I will choose that video and then I'll hit open. So I've uploaded that video to my Google Drive, but again, all files by default are private. So if I were to put this on my site right now, let's say I'll remove this and replace it with a video. I'll double click, add something from my drive. Here's my video file right here. So I can click, click publish. And if I go to the public site, I'm going to copy this address and then go to my incognito window where I'm not signed in as anyone. And I paste the link to my site. Once I go to the page where I uploaded the video, you'll see you'll get an error message here because the privacy settings were not uh, selected. So now let me switch back to my site and I want to edit the privacy settings. You do that by going back to your Google Drive, going to the file. If it's a video, you can go ahead and right click on it and hit share. Again, go to advanced and instead of private, you want to change it so anyone with the link can view. So I'll hit save. Okay. So now I've updated the privacy settings. If I go to this page where I'm viewing it as a public member and I, I don't have access, if I refresh the page now, now I see the video. Now I have access to it. And that's how you add a video to your Google site. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use a URL shortener such as tinyurl or bit.ly to make it easier for people to find your site. So if I view the published version of my site, again, by clicking on this little arrow next to publish and view published site, it shows me the actual web address for my website. So that's pretty long. Uh, not necessarily easy to remember. So what I can do is copy this link. And again, this is the published 
version, the link to go to the published version. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to tinyurl.com. Once you're here, you can paste your web address link. And then I suggest making a custom tiny URL by adding something here. The thing about making it custom is that since so many, this is a public site, anybody can use this many tiny URL addresses will be taken. So if I were to put, you know, um, let's say math site, chances are that's taken. So let me try it. If I hit enter, yeah, see, it says, um, that link is not available. So you want to make sure that you are choosing something that's unique. So for this one, I'm going to say Mr. K, uh, three, five, four site. So if I hit enter, this is what you want to see your, that your tiny URL was created. So now instead of people going to this very long link, you can just tell parents or students to go to tinyurl.com slash Mr. K354 site or whatever you choose. Make sure you choose something that's unique and easy to type in. And we can test this out. So if I copy this and I open up a new incognito window, so I can go to tinyurl.com slash Mr. K354 site. And it takes me to my page. Lastly, I would recommend taking that URL and putting it on the home page so your kids know um, the, the tiny URL and that it's easy to type in. So I can say There you go. And so I publish the site. And now when people go to my page, they can see the tiny URL. And hopefully the more they come to visit this page, um, the higher the chances they will memorize this link right here.